Hello pals, welcome back or welcome to my channel. I'm Ashling. nice to meet you. Today or this week, I'm gonna do a bit of a tag. It's, um, it's called the Kitchen Garden Book Tag and it was created by Kaylee, whom I will tag down below and I will include the link to their original video as well. Doorbell rang there, sorry, got distracted because of course I did, but I have a stack of books here and I have a list of herbs. So let's get cracking. The first one is Rosemary and it is a book that stands the tests of time. And for that, I have chosen a book that uh, has been around for a very long time. It's a classic but also I've loved it since I was a child and I still read it as an adult. I used to carry this book around with me in my bag and just pick it up and just open random pages and read it and look at it and um, just love it. So it probably needs zero introduction. It is The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. I always butcher the pronunciation. So. The Little Prince is essentially about a little prince. Um, so he visits various planets, including Earth. It's quite a bizarre story and it's kind of difficult to really explain it. I think if you haven't read it, it's really worth reading. It's, it is essentially a children's book, but it makes observations about life, about adults, um, about human nature. It addresses themes of friendship, it addresses themes of loneliness, it addresses themes of love and loss. There's a lot in this little book. It's only, do, 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 do. my copy anyway, is only like, it's less than 100 pages, it's 85 pages. But um, the, the illustrations in this are iconic as well. I think they're incredibly recognizable. I think so many of us, even if you haven't read the book, are aware of this book, are aware of these lovely little illustrations. It is such a joy to read, but it's really profound as a kid's book. Um, I don't think we should be writing off children's books at all. Uh, I think it's one that just, it's stunning. Like it's, it's beautiful. The story is beautifully told. So this is translated by Michael Morpurgo. Um, it's originally written in French. Look at the back of that as well. Would definitely recommend this. It's one I definitely feel I'll keep returning to. It's probably my most reread book as somebody who doesn't reread books. So that definitely says something. The next herb on the list is mint. And it's a book that offers fresh perspective. I kind of struggled with thinking of something for mint, but then it came to me. I was trying to think of a book that was written from obviously a different perspective, um, something a little bit unusual, but then it came to me. One of my favorite books ever was gifted to me by my partner, it was, it's his copy. And it's called Here by Richard Maguire. This is a graphic novel but it's, it's really special because essentially this book is about a room. The room is kind of the main character and it's what happens in this room over the span of thousands of years. It's beautiful. So not only is it the same room, but it has loads of different characters, loads of different themes. The lighting changes, like the colors are just stunning. Um, so it's a book that's really unusual. I've never come across something like this before in which, you know, the main character is, is a place really. And it is beautiful. It's just, I, I just, I find it really hard to describe it without actually showing it. And it has, you know, we get outside the room as well, but it's all about the room. So this say, for example, is set in 1998 in this little passage here, but then we have these uh, lovely landscape and stuff going on around it. And it's not chronological either, which is really cool. So there's, you know, loads of different cutouts, loads of different things going on. Look at this, like, isn't that beautiful? So I feel like this, graphic novel is from the perspective of a room. We never see something like that as the main character. Good morning. I just 
this is stunning. It's one of my most prized, most favorite possessions. And I really think regardless of whether you're into graphic novels or not, it's something that you should pick up, should look at. I don't know if you can get it in your local library because I know graphic novels can be expensive, but it's so heartwarming and profound and beautiful. And it's literally just so unusual, but just stunning. So muchos recommend that one. Uh, okay, so the next herb is basil and it is a book that's set in the Mediterranean or written by an author from a Mediterranean country. So this book is actually written by a British author but quite a large section of the novel is set in Italy. So parts in Tuscany but mostly in Florence. The book I'm speaking about is Still Life by Sarah Winman. She is my favourite author of all time. No doubt she wrote my favourite novel, Still Life. Look at this copy as well. Look at those edges. Beautiful. So this book starts out um, set in 1944 in the hills of Tuscany, where two people meet in the ruins of a wine cellar during the war. Um, so we have Ulysses and we have Evelyn. Ulysses is a young British soldier and Evelyn is, I believe, in her 60s and she's an art historian and maybe a possible spy. She's come to Italy to salvage paintings from the wreckage and also to relive memories of the time she encountered E.M. Forster. That's kind of where it all kicks off. So Evelyn's talk of like truth and beauty kind of plant a seed in Ulysses' mind and it basically shapes the trajectory of his life like the next four decades or so. So this novel travels from the Tuscan Hills to London to Florence. It has one of the most beautiful cast of characters I have ever encountered. I never knew that I could fall in love with a parrot and be so moved by a parrot in the way that I was with this book. Sarah Winman writes in such an inclusive way makes you feel like everyone deserves a place at the table. To be honest with you, the premise of this novel didn't necessarily sit perfectly well with me because I remember going to an interview with Sarah Winman where she spoke about this novel before she wrote it. So, and she said that she was writing a book or wanted to write a book about a cast of characters um, that was heavily influenced by A Room with a View by E.M. Forster and let me tell you, I studied the film, uh, the James Ivory film in school. I, I hadn't actually read the novel but I had a deep hatred for the film so when she said that I was a bit like, I don't know, maybe, maybe four time is just not going to be the novel for me but it turns out it is one of my favourite books of all time. It's so much about place as much as it is about the characters within the book. It's heartbreaking, but in a really lovely way. It's so much about love. It's so much about friendship. It's so much about found family. I love stories like this. Absolutely, 100%. Read this book. I cannot, I cannot stress how much I loved it and still love it to this day. And I still think about the characters, even though I read it maybe about two years ago now. So it's one to add to your TBR if you're into kind of historical fiction, if you're into found family stories, if you're into like tender writing. She is 100% my favorite author. I'm gonna say it again and again and again. She's just a beautiful woman and I really hope that she writes another novel because I cannot get enough of her and I have nothing left of hers to read. So definitely recommend this one, Still Life by Sarah Winman. Okay, so the next herb that we have is lavender. My favorite, to be honest, I go around stinking of lavender every day and I know some people don't like the smell of lavender, but I do, so suck it up, loves, sorry. Uh, so the next one is a book like a warm calming hug, just like lavender. Um, so for this one, I have chosen Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. So this book is just so lovely. Uh, it's cozy fantasy and I think it's the genre for me, to be honest. It is just, it's so cozy, it's so lovely, it's so low stakes. So we follow Viv, who is an orc, who essentially wants to get out of the life of like killing and fighting and just isn't into it anymore. She's tired, her back hurts. So she decides, 
that she's gonna go to a city called Thune and she's gonna set up a cafe. And in this cafe, she's gonna serve something that has never been heard of in this place before, coffee. She fell in love with coffee and wants to open her own little cafe. So again, this is another novel about found family. Are we noticing a theme here? Viv gets lucky in that people kind of approach her and start to work for her, become her friends, become her family. It's so sweet. There's very little tension in it. There is tension, don't worry, there is a story. But it's so sweet, it's so calming, it's lovely. There's no no fear. You can read this and relax and it's all gonna be okay. It sounds so silly. I remember hearing about the premise and I was like, that just sounds ridiculous. But uh, actually, it was a five star book for me and I cannot wait for the next novel, which I believe is about a bookshop. So that's really fun. So the next one then is Thyme. So an underrated book. For this one, I have chosen a book by an Irish author. Her first book was called Notes to Self and it did really well. It's a book of essays about femininity, about womanhood, about health, about a lot of things. Uh, would also recommend that one, but the one that I'm gonna recommend for this prompt is Ruth and Penn by Emily Pine. I love that cover, I just think it's beautiful. Um, also tabbed a bit, and I'm not much of a tabber, so. Um, so this one is Emily Pine's first novel. It was published and the reviews were very mixed. I bought it because I got a signed copy. I found it in a bookshop and I couldn't pass it up after loving notes to self so much, but I was a bit unsure about it and it took me a long time to actually read it. One thing to mention is that this book is set on one day. It covers the course of one day, so October 7th, 2019, and it's set in Dublin in Ireland. and. So Ruth is a 43 year old therapist and we follow her as she goes about her day in Dublin, her work life and essentially Ruth's marriage is falling apart and that's kind of what angle we're coming from with her but also there's another character, they don't know each other so there's another character called Penn, she's an autistic teenager and Penn has a good friend whom she is actually entirely in love with and today is the day that she's going to tell her friend how she feels about her so they're going to a protest. Penn is very nervous because she doesn't like crowds and loud noises but she's willing to do it for her friend. So this book is so much about communication and miscommunication. It's also about how to make or how to find space in a world in which you don't feel like there is space for you or you don't feel welcome. It's again, it's about inclusivity, it's about loving other people. It's just such a lovely read and I will also say that I went to an event in my library last year where Emily Pine was speaking about this book and I hadn't read it at the time but that day I had submitted a piece to a literary journal um, a piece of flash fiction and I was really nervous about it and after hearing Emily's pine speaking it was lovely because she was very much about the idea that your story deserves to be told, your story needs to be told and I wrote down on my notes app on my phone that day that uh, it's okay to take up space and I just felt really um really relieved leaving I think. I, I didn't feel nervous about the piece anymore because sometimes I'm like who am I to write something? Who am I to put something out there? Why why do I matter? Um, I think we all get that sometimes so she really inspired me in that sense and the piece was published and I got paid for it as well which was lovely so and I feel like somehow Emily Pine played a part in that even though I had already submitted it but yeah that was lovely so she's um she's a really interesting author and I definitely would recommend picking up this book. So the next herb that I have cilantro and it's a book and either hate it or love it book and for this book I actually got rid of my copy because I didn't love it let's just say so it was um the Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Um, I hadn't read The Night Circus, which was another novel that this author had written. I had heard like 
rave reviews for The Night Circus and then this novel comes along and again I'm hearing so much amazing stuff about it but then I was also hearing stuff about it like I mean this book is almost like cult like people have gotten tattoos of like bees and swords and keys and people like are mad for it and then there's people that just really didn't like it and didn't get it and unfortunately I fell in the didn't like it, didn't get it category, which is a shame because I was really looking forward to reading it. So we follow Zachary who finds a strange book in his library and there's lots of different stories in it but what's really unusual about this book is it contains a story about Zachary's childhood that happened in real life that he didn't write, that he didn't tell anybody about but yet it exists in this book. He ends up kind of going down a rabbit hole of like what's the story with this book, what's going on here, um, gets into some really dangerous situations. He ends up in like a subterranean labyrinth filled with stories and it's like many, many, many layers below the surface of the earth. I just didn't understand it. I know that there's something underneath there or maybe it's just one of those books that you just kind of have to get on with and don't um, analyze it too much. It's just, you just gotta go along for the ride. But. I will say I didn't like I didn't hate hate it but I was definitely glad when it was finished and I did unhaul it as well and I normally keep books that I really like so I decided to drop it into my local secondhand bookshop in the hopes that somebody would find it that actually does love it so okay we're actually onto the last herb already which is amazing and um, the last herb is bergamot a book that started bitter ended sweet so a book you were unsure of but ended liking i am not somebody who is big into like greek mythology i don't know much about it it's not something that really has ever interested me and then along came the song of achilles by madeline miller um surely needs no introduction so we follow Patroclus, it's told from the perspective of Patroclus and he is exiled by his father so he goes to this other household where he meets the famous Achilles. This book is a love story and it is a beautiful love story. We grow up with Patroclus and Achilles, we follow them as they fall in love with each other. It's stunning and then Achilles is a bit of an egotistic man unfortunately and that becomes his downfall so off they go anyway. Patroclus follows Achilles along when they're fighting at Troy and Achilles is fighting away but then his honour is slighted by Agamemnon and he decides that he's not going to fight anymore and he's like the star fighter. He's the, he's the top man, he's you know, he's the guy that's going to win this war but he decides, nah, I'm not fighting. So he watches so many of his fellow soldiers being felled, being killed being tortured and then he returns to battle only after a particular personal slight. I don't know if it's a spoiler to say what happens or not because Greek mythology has been around for a very long time but you know if you haven't read the book if you're like me and you're not aware of it I won't tell you why or whatever but it's a lovely book. It's really well written. I would definitely read more Madeline Miller. I have Circe on my shelves now as well. I haven't read it yet but um, it's another one that maybe wouldn't have appealed to me before but after reading The Song of Achilles I am ready for it. It's really upsetting this book as well and um, maybe that's why I enjoyed it so much. It's very sad. I went into this book thinking I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't be interested in it. I wouldn't care and there I was bawling my eyes out by the end of it so make of that what you will. And thanks to Kaylee for creating this tag I really enjoyed it and I hope you guys enjoyed it too maybe you got some book recommendations. I hope you guys are doing well I hope you're minding yourselves minding each other don't forget to like and subscribe if that's your thing if not it's cool. I shall talk to you guys soon let me know what you've been reading what you've been up to and I'll talk to you next week mind yourselves bye bye